the worst part about this business is greed, right? Fear and greed. Once you get a lightning bolt, once you get this amazing move, um, and it basically your, your, your lottery ticket has won, cash it in. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Um, it is Memorial Day weekend, so obviously we want to send a special thank you uh, for all the military uh, women, men uh, that, again, have been nothing but God sent to everybody who protects our freedoms, our, our, our lifestyles, our just everyday walks of life. So everybody, we want to say always a thank you for the Memorial Days, for the Veterans Day. Anybody who's ever put on a uniform, thank you very, very much. Uh, obviously, one day is just not enough to um, kind of... Uh, look and say thank you and all that stuff. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. And I think I can speak for everybody. Uh, so this is a long weekend. Um, I was supposed to be uh, on vacation this weekend uh, for the long weekend. And the problem was it is absolutely pouring. Um, it's going to be raining for the next three days. And instead of me be ready to kind of go away, it is right now, what time is it right now? It is 7.46 in the morning on a Saturday um, after a long week uh, of trading and answering emails and talking all day and this, that, the other thing, the last thing um, that we want to do as traders is wake up in the next morning and kind of put in that work. And, you know, people always talk about, I want it bad enough. I want it bad enough. I want it bad enough. I'll do whatever it takes to, to succeed. This is the only business that it doesn't make a difference how bad you want, right? It really doesn't make a difference. Um, this is an unforgiving business. Uh, this is a business that there is no blueprint, okay? There absolutely is no blueprint what is the best way to get to the destination that you want to get. Um, and just because there is no blueprint, um, you have to put in that work. You have to uh, wake up 6 o'clock in the morning. You have to wake up uh, 6.30 in the morning when you don't want to, okay? When you don't need to in your mind. But you have to do it because, again, the more you put into this business, the more hours and research and sacrifice and all that stuff, all these cl cliches that you hear, they're necessary. Because believe me, the last thing I want to do after a week of trading is wake up at 6.30 in the morning on a Saturday and, oh, by the way, start the cycle again. But it's so necessary. So for a lot of you um, aspiring traders that, you know, want the, the quote unquote, the lifestyle, which is absolutely nonsense. Um, you really do got to put in those special hours, right? You do have to put in those hours of research and back testing and, and chart sessions and all that stuff, right? All that stuff that you hear about that you think you can, you know, you can sidestep and get around that it doesn't matter. You know, you'll figure it out, right? It doesn't apply to you. your talent, right? Your talent will get you where you want to go. Um, again, this is not an entitlement business. This is not a a part-time, you know, let me spend 15 minutes looking at charts. This is it. I don't care if you trade uh, five days a week or you allocate five minutes to your portfolio. You have to be a professional, okay? It, it's your hard-earned money. You, you have to do everything possible, not only to be that good alpha hunter that's responsible. You have to learn how to be protector. You have to be, uh, you have to put yourself in a position that no matter what happens, you're protecting your capital first. And if you wing it, right, if you wing it based on talent or based on I hope things work out, you're probably not going to get to the places you want. So if you are very, very serious in this business and you want to have a career that lasts more than one trade, uh, get your mind right. I mean, that's the first key. Get your mind right. Put yourself in a position of longevity. You're always thinking five years down the line. And, and again, I've said this many, many times. Time is going to improve everything you do, right? You're going to mess up trades. You're going to, you're going to mess up trades. You're going to sell too early. You're going to hang on too late. You're going to screw things up. You're going to be emotionally uh, attached to every single trade. You're not going to let go. You're going to have sleepless nights. You have all these things. But again, just understand every single trader uh, that's ever opened up an account, you know, went through exactly the same thing you are. And again, time is going to make you whole. You're going to be a better trader. 
year 20 than you are at year two. These are the facts. And again, there's no such thing as a great trader. There's no such thing. Okay, don't don't use that social media nonsense. There's no such thing as a great trader. Okay, unless you're on the Forbes lips, right? Unless you are on the Forbes list, I don't want to hear the word great trader. The only difference between somebody trading for 20 years, right, than two years is time. The person who's trading for 20 years figured out what not to do a long time ago, and now they're just implementing it every single day. So keep you know keep up the hard work, right? You know, put in those extra hours. Even again, even if you don't know what you're looking for, okay, it's going to click. It's going to click. Start looking at charts over and over and over again, two, three hours a weekend. Start looking at other groups. Find a niche. Maybe what you're trading is just not, you know, not what you're looking for. It doesn't fit your comfortability. It doesn't fit your account size. It doesn't fit your account size. It doesn't fit your lifestyle. It doesn't fit your uh, pain threshold. Find something, right? But put in that work. Don't let it just put yourself in a situation that one day you're going to wake up and it's all going to click. It doesn't magically happen like that. But again, stay with it, guys. Um, I know a lot of you guys are new to this business. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have been uh, very, very unfortunate in your results, but that's common, right? It's like, a, it's like you know, four years. Your first four years, that's the getting to know your period. This is to figure out who you are, what you are, what you want to be, and how you're going to get there. So stay with it, guys. Um, you know, have a positive attitude but absolutely put in that work. So guys, hopefully everybody is having a great weekend. So let's talk about the market. Um, again, if you've been watching the video just in the last week, again, really good tape, uh, especially in the queues. Um, you look at the, the market that is as a whole, very, very good action. The queues reclaim the 50 day moving average. And for the last seven days or so, they've been doing very, very well, led by the semiconductors, right? That is the group that is obviously standing out. Uh, that is the group that is having the biggest movers. Uh, Texas Instruments, big mover there. LRCX, right? Big mover there. But there's nothing bigger than NVIDIA. NVIDIA, uh, ever since they came out uh, with their 4 for one stock split, has been on an absolute monster run and no bigger run than Friday. We'll get to the individual pivots in a second. Uh, for all you guys who caught the trade, for all you guys who are still in the trade off that uh, 632 level, I mean, this is just insane. There's an absolute insane candle. But this is the group that's leading us up. And it's very, very notable. And if you look at the QQQs, they're doing a great job kind of hugging this five day moving average. You can see here every single time it hits the five day now above the 50, it bounces. Hit the five day on Thursday, it bounced. Hit the five day on Friday, it bounced. It's holding on. But here's kind of where I take off you know, the rose colored glasses and I start digging deeper. And again, that's, this is what the weekends are for, for you to dig deeper. And if it wasn't for the semiconductors, if you take the semiconductors out, there's, there's a problem here, right? There's a lot of problem with a lot of individual names. So for every, you know, for every NVIDIA that's doing incredibly well and a Facebook who's done doing very, very well, you know, had a little bit of profit taking on Friday, but again, took out the previous earnings highs. There's a lot of names, they're just doing absolutely nothing. They're still stuck underneath supply. So look at names like Netflix, right? You know, again, had a nice little pivot on Friday. Well, again, we'll get into the individual pivots in a second. But again, very, very underneath supply, lackluster, had one decent move literally in the last several weeks. Uh, Amazon just can't rally, just absolutely can't rally. Uh, Apple can't rally, right? Can't rally as well. Uh, you look at Square, had a nice little move up, but still way underneath supply. Um, you know, so it's, it's very, very disturbing underneath the surface because these are the names that you want to turn around and say, these are the leadership, right? Uh, names like Microsoft, for example, again, you know, nice move from the bottom, but it's still way underneath the supply. So the question kind of going into this week, and again, you, you want to play devil's advocate. You can't just go into uh, a new week and say, this is good, right? This is good. This is bad. You have to play devil's advocate because the last thing you want to do is get caught off guard, right? Because if, if you're sitting there and you're biased in one direction and you start seeing stocks moving lower, you can't just say, ah, it's okay. They, they haven't been participating anyway. It's not going to affect my stocks. They do, right? Because remember, it's a sentiment. These things usually move as a tribe. They usually move a, as kind of a movement. And when one starts to pull, you know, the other one starts looking at on the corner of his eye and say, well, wait a minute, what's wrong with that guy? Right. And they all start slowly, but surely, but pulling. And the, the question going into uh, this week is, yeah, I mean, granted, the cues are very, very uh, strong right now. They're sitting, sitting on a rising 
uh, five minutes support. And until they get below the 50 day moving average, you know, there's really nothing to worry about. Call it, um, you know, call it, um, you know, any type of uh, back test potential. But you have to be conscious that the rest of the group is. And that is very, very important to understand. And you have to ask yourself a question. Well, if the semiconductors have a rest, right, if they have a rest, well, what are these stocks going to do that haven't really participated in, in the last week's run up, the last two weeks run up? What's going to happen to them? And this is kind of where we start looking at uh, other sectors. We start looking at other groups. We start looking at other things that are working, right? Right now, you're having a lot of speculation money uh, roll into the markets. You can see this week. And again, again, guys, congratulations for all you guys uh, who had this AMC move. I mean, this is just absolutely insane. And call it what you will, luck, FOMO, dumb money chasing, diamond, what, call it whatever you want. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Uh, retail uh, deserves a bone uh, now every then, right? They, they deserve a bone once in a while, okay? The question is, are you smart enough? And, and, and are you smart enough to recognize that you won, right? The stock has gone from the bottom channel here from nine dollars to 35 right in relatively short period of time you won right you won there is no well now the stock's at 35 can it go to 50 well now the stock's at 50 could it go to 100 you won okay the worst part about this business is greed right fear and greed once you get a lightning bolt once you get this amazing move um and it basically your, your your lottery ticket has won Cash it in, you know, cash it in. Again, if you if you bought the stock at nine and it went to 15, that's a fantastic move. It went to 20, it's ridiculous. It went to 35 bucks, right? How much more do you want? So it's one of those scenarios, retail, you did a great job. You hit it, you hit it very, very aggressively. Congratulations, that's awesome. But be smart, right? Take your money, pay your taxes. If you have some money left over, buy a piece of rental property, think long-term. Right. Think long term, you know, think uh, what's going to happen five, 10 years from now. This is maybe a, a, a case that you can allocate some money from your winnings and set yourself up. Right. Set yourself up that you don't have to be pressed for every nickel and every dime. Use long term approach. Always think long term. Think of it as a big marathon. So if you got a blessing from nine to thirty five, I mean, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. You're blessed. Be smart with the money. Um, going into this week, you got to start looking at a lot of other groups here. The IWM has been very, very strong off the off the fifty minute break, uh, off the fifty minute reclaim. That's been very, very strong. Uh, the IBB again, Trice is trying to reclaim the fifty day moving average. There's a lot of representation again in these biotechs along with the semiconductors and Qs. So this is why it's holding the Qs up for now. So we have to be very, very conscious if these groups start to pull then we have to start really getting cautious and start looking uh, at the other side of the market. But I don't like the fact that a name like Apple not only did not participate uh, for the last, you know, for the last week or so and kept on getting rejected off the 50 day moving average, but now it's starting to attack the bottom range here. It's not really a healthy thing. So we have to be a little bit more sensible going into this week. Are there setups that I really like for this week? Sure. Absolutely. Like ZS looks great. Looks absolutely great. Uh, came out with fantastic earnings. Um, it's just kind of digesting its earnings channel. You know, look at this, you know, look at this channel here. You can you see it here all the way back from that first Goldman Sachs upgrade on 413. Uh, if this thing starts confirming this channel, is you know, is there a big potential? Sure. You know, the first move is like 16 to $20 and then you have your all time highs. So there is potential on a move like this. There is potential, for example, on a Baidu. Okay. Maybe not, you know, maybe not the, the traditional run like it had right over here. But you can see how tight the channel is getting here. It's getting super, super tight. So you want to make sure that you're looking at names that haven't run yet, but are really at the at the point that, you know what, it could go on a second run. It could go on a very, very aggressive move. And then there's names like NVIDIA that are just, you know, just out of their mind, going absolutely nuts. Uh, 700 call buyers coming in all over the place. This is now uh, the absolute leader in technology. Okay, I don't think you could get a very you, you don't I don't think you could get a bigger mover uh, than the video right now. And it looks like a channel here is now forming all the way into the 700. So there are names that I'm watching this week that are coming out of consolidation channels, coming out of earnings channels. 
uh, or are just an absolute monster that potentially can continue uh, to go to its next uh, level uh, of excellence. So going into this week, I'm very, very cautious. I'm still bullish, abs absolutely bullish until I have a reason uh, not to be bullish. Um, I think this is a scenario of you know, keep the faith, right? Keep the faith, keep the gravy train going. But also, again, just keep an eye on the former leaders or the leaders like an Apple, like an Amazon, like a Microsoft, uh, even Tesla. You know, Tesla had a couple of really, really good days this week. But but look at the chart, right? I mean, look at the chart here. I mean, we capitalized on these channels here, you know, all the way up into supply. And now, you know, it's, it's trying to build a new base here, which is good. It's hugging the five day moving average, which is good. You can see it here. Every time it hit the five, it's bouncing five bounce, five bounce. But it, it, again, even a name like Tesla is, is nowhere near out of the woods yet. Again, you can control the pivots. Um, you can still take advantage from channel to channel, and it still has room uh, all the way up to this uh, 650, 660 level. But the one thing you have to pay attention to, just in case, just like everything else, like an Amazon, Apple. So if it loses the five day on a close, then obviously. Uh, we have a different um, conversation. Uh, overall, uh, you know, pretty solid week. Um, I was actually very, very surprised uh, by the action in the tape for the last for the last few days. Very, very aggressive, considering a lot of people went on vacation. I know a lot of people that did go on vacation that are now sitting really pissed off because it's pouring outside. So anybody who's in the Hamptons this weekend uh, that left on Wednesday or Thursday. Right. Congratulations. You have you have three straight days of rain. And unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, now I'm stuck in my house as well. So let's talk about uh, Friday's pivots. You didn't have a lot. OK, but the ones that did go went pretty, you know, pretty well here. So I still like this Baidu channel uh, tight daily range. One ninety six rejected three times. It needs to build. I still like this one ninety eight macro on Baidu. Not a big move on Friday. But you can see how tight it's correlating, right? You can see it here. It took out the 96, went to like 97 and change. But I still like this tight channel here. We, we, we've seen some pretty aggressive order flow in the options market coming for the 200s, the 205s this week. So maybe this thing sparks up. Uh, there is room all the way up to like two, you know, 205, 208 to the 50-day moving average, assuming, again, assuming uh, technology kind of holds serve. So I still like that as well. Uh, Netflix, nice little push here. Uh, needs, 507 needs to build. Keep in mind, still way underneath supply. So it's just a cash flow move potential to 511, 515. Here was Netflix, right? So it took out the 507 and went right to that five. Uh, you know, almost 512 area. It's for a supply. Nice move. You know, nice move. Nothing wrong there at all. I caught a piece of that as well. Uh, ZS, I'm still watching. Uh, IQ actually confirmed the previous day. If you guys watched the can uh, the channel from the previous day, here was the pivot right over here. Um, uh, yeah, 1440. So 1440 was the first pivot on this thing, and it needed to confirm. Uh, it needed to confirm uh, the 1460 area. Uh, so here was IQ, not a big move, but again, from the 1440 area, uh, traded up to like the 1480s and then really, you know, turned around again, a lot of, a lot of bad, uh, a lot of bad stuff happening still with the stock. I thought it was going to get up to 15, uh, only went up about 45 cents. Not really a big move there. Uh, wish never got up to nine Facebook. I still like this thing. Uh, never got to the 334 level. I still like this 334 for confirmation on Facebook's move from Friday. Um, Here's the craziest part. I actually bought, you see this area here, 625 remount for experienced traders worth 631, 632 if it needs to build. Um, I actually remounted, basically remount as a bounce play. I actually remounted at 625 and it held for a second. There was a big seller there. So I wound up losing like 80 cents, not the end of the world. And ironically, they cleaned up the seller and they took it above the 631, 632 to push it all the way up to 636, but whatever. It is what it is. Uh, I messed this thing up. Uh, Apple downgraded, held 125 three times. If it builds below, can flush. And here's again, here's the part of the problem here. You know, Apple just doesn't look good, right? It wasn't a huge move down because it wasn't a lot of selling pressure. But the point is, there's something wrong, right? There's absolutely definitely something wrong uh, with these names. They're just the money is being rotated into other things. And as of right now, they're just uh, kind of dead money. And just kind of drifting lower. So it took out the 25 and held here three times. Uh, pretty much closed at the lows of the day on Apple. Still looks lower there. Um, FUTU, nice little pop there. 142 needs to build. 
We talked about FUT over the last couple of days. So it took out the 42, uh, went to about 45. I still like this thing. If it starts reclaiming 45, you might, might see the 50s. So nice little pop there on FUTU. Uh, for all you guys who are trading this uh, naked, you know, went, to, went from 70 to 70, like 74, 75 cents. Nothing, nothing crazy here. But uh, MVIS, you had $25 June call buyers came in initially. A nice little initial pop on MVIS. You have this pop here from the 17 area. Uh, it went all the way to 18.50 before a reversal. So if you guys caught a piece of that trade, uh, great job there. But this is definitely the one. Um, and again, th th to say this thing went was kind of an understatement. Uh, for all you guys who are who are still long, me and you, we're not friends. No, all, all in jokes aside, congratulations. 632 needs to build. And to say this was a a pretty aggressive pivot is an understatement. So here was the 632, right? This whole daily channel here at 632. You see the high here from 526? It was 631, uh, 631.75, right? 631.75. So this thing just absolutely went nuts. So it took out, it took out this whole channel and all of the, it just literally did not have a downtick. It's it just amazing. It, it Usually you would see a stock challenge at 60 day, 60 minute moving average. It didn't back test until the until after hours. Just to give you an idea how, how strong it was, it, it put up it, it literally put up a twenty five dollar candle without a back test. That's incredible. That's just absolutely insane. You just don't see that. So the video looks really really good. It looks like a channel here um, more to the upside. Assuming technology uh, is strong, you know, could see six sixties. Uh, on that first initial push as well. It's a huge move on NVIDIA. Obviously, take on the way. Again, nobody thought this thing was going to put up a $30 candle, but it is what it is. Uh, obviously, I'm joking around. This is boom, went up $0.04. Cents. Is $0.04 cents a lot on a $0.70 cent stock? I don't know. Um, I was joking around. I said, you're rich. Um, yeah, so here comes Netflix, 511, 510. So good move there on Netflix. Uh, MVIS comes in with a June buyer, and I believe that is it. So, you know, look, very solid action. Um, I think the bounce plays worked very, very well this week. Um, really well. You know, I, I, a lot of you guys who, who are just watching this broadcast, broadcast um, and just not on the, in, in the live webinar, um, you kind of don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But stocks that are very, very strong um, usually come and back test at least once or twice on a 60 minute channel. Uh, and that 60 minute channel is always the highest. You know, highest of area for probable bounce. And if, you, for example, if you look at Zoom, you kind of see what I'm talking about. Everybody see this orange line, right? You see, everybody see this orange line here. This represents the highest area of a rising wedge in the 60 minute. So the bounce plays every single time it comes to that area is a high probability it's going to bounce. If you see, you see this orange area, it came to this area bounce, it came to this area bounce, it came to this area bounce, it came to this area bounce. And that's the same thing if you look at the cues on the daily, right? If you look at the cues on the daily, it's the same line. It's that orange line. This is the shortest term sentiment for a stock. So if a trend is going to hold and you have and you believe in the thesis of that trend, this is the area that's going to probably create uh, the most emotional sellers with the highest probability of buyers. And you notice here, you know, even on the cues, every single time it hits the orange line, it bounces, hits the orange line, it bounces, hits the orange line, it bounces, hits the orange line, it bounces. So we've been doing a lot of these bounce plays for years now, but this week I really was focused into these bounce plays. Uh, Tesla, for the exception of Friday, was there was a reload seller there. Tesla's been a phenomenal uh, trader on these bounce areas. And when these things bounce, they bounce really, really aggressively. So uh, just as a personal note, just for personal growth, and I'm just trying to learn like everybody else, I'm gonna definitely start putting a lot more attention uh, to those bounces, which is gonna complement uh, the natural pivot. So guys, uh, again, put in the work this weekend. Everybody needs a rest. Um, the weather sucks. There is, especially for all of us who live in the Northeast, there is absolutely no reason that you can't spend a couple of hours getting better. Okay, uh, batting it, you know, wanting it bad enough is not enough, guys. You got to put in the work. You got to put in those long hours when you don't want to. And the moral of the story is, you want to win, go get it. Guys, have a great weekend. God bless. Stay safe. I love you all. I'll see you all on Tuesday.